The next pattern in the Dealing with Generalization series is called Extract Subclass. The motivation here is that a class has features, or some features, which are only used in some instances, and so we'll create a subclass for that subset of features. Taking a look at the class we have here, this job item, we have some expected fields like the quantity of items, and the unit price for a given item, even a calculated total price. Then we have some other fields which are only used in special cases, this is labor and employee, where if it's a labor item, then the unit price is the employee's hourly rate, and if it's not a labor item, then the unit price is the price of the item. Now, in fact, anytime we see something that's a Boolean with a is something or has something in the name, that's often an indication to us that that's just a, a functionality flag of some sort, where in some cases we'll see some behavior, and in other cases we'll see different behavior. And that's just as often usually a case that we can take a more polymorphism-based approach to that instead of that Boolean flag. And so that's what we're going to do here. Now this particular refactoring pattern has a lot of different steps, a lot of discrete movements of code from one to the other, and the ordering of that steps isn't terribly important. What is important is that we keep those steps discrete and testable in and of themselves. So our first step, of course, will be to create the subclass. We'll call it labor item. Now in a lot of cases, this would be a step in and of itself. Although in this case, we notice that there's no default constructor on the parent class. And so just to get this to compile, we're going to need to bring down that same constructor signature. In fact, we could just copy and paste it for now. We'll be changing it later. And in fact, this would be a good time to go through our domain and start pointing items to the new constructor. Anything that calls this constructor anywhere in the domain where the last parameters here are false and null can continue to use this constructor. But anything where this parameter is true and where we're passing an employee, then we'll probably want to change to this constructor. And now would be a great time to do that because we're going to start making breaking changes in these constructors. Now first things first, we're going to make this constructor protected and then add a new constructor for this particular class. And this one needs a unit price and a quantity. Because anything that's calling this job item it's always passing false and null for labor and employee. Or even if it's not passing null for an employee, it could pass a, a valid instance, but we're not going to be using that for anything that's not a labor item, anything that's just a job item. So we'll make a constructor that doesn't need those values anymore. Now that was a breaking change, so we'd want to go through our domain code and update that calls to that constructor to now call the new one. And at the same time, we can make the same change down here, where we no longer need unit price. We can just pass zero for that. And again, we no longer need this flag. We could just pass true for that. We'll change all the consuming code for that constructor, rerun all of our tests, for now, we just compile. And now we haven't really changed any behavior. We've just started changing the footprints of these objects. The behavior itself is going to be when we start moving this functionality down to the child class. And in fact, we can start doing that now. First, let's make this virtual. And then we can override it down here. Here we return the employee's rate. And we probably don't need to use this setter. We could just leave it empty. We could put in a comment saying rethink the design. 
rethink, sorry. But we don't really need that right now. That's for later functionality changes. This should be the exact same functionality, just refactored into a different pattern. And so what we'll use is the base setter. Again, it's probably not necessary, but we're going to keep that same functionality. And now, if we were to rerun all of our tests after we've updated everything to use the new constructors, we should find in our code coverage that this never gets called. In fact, we no longer need this flag because this job item version of unit price should never be a labor item. So we can get rid of that. And in fact, we can replace this whole thing with just an auto-implemented property. Rerun all of our tests. Everything should be good. And we can continue with the refactoring. So we've moved the functionality down. Now we could probably move down these fields as well. Let's start with the isLabor field. Nothing really uses that except this one constructor being set here. So if we get rid of that, then nothing uses is labor. It's private, so getting rid of it doesn't do anything. We'd still want to rerun all of our tests anyway, of course. Now that we've gotten rid of that, we can essentially get rid of it from these constructors as well. So let's start with removing that. removing these. Still no externally visible changes in that, so the consuming code shouldn't know the difference. Now we're at this employee field. Well, this employee field is set in this parent constructor, but it's only ever used in the child object. So we should probably set it in the child constructor instead. Of course, in order to do that, Notice that won't compile because the setter is private. So let's make that setter protected. And then this parent constructor no longer needs to set it. This will be an opportune time to rerun all the tests. And now these constructors can continue to change because we no longer need this here. The child constructor takes care of it. And so we get rid of these, that null there and that employee there. You'll find the compiler is telling us now that it can't tell the difference between these two constructors because there is no difference, at least not in their method signatures. And so we can collapse that back to what it was. And that additionally was not really a breaking change. And so we can make sure all our consuming code is still good, rerun all of our tests. And at this point, we can simply push down this field. That's the last change. We'd rerun all of our tests, make sure everything is still working, and we've essentially abstracted this, uh, or extracted, sorry, this labor item concept from this job item concept. And so now each one does specifically what it's intended to do without having that unsightly Boolean flag that indicates that sometimes we do one thing and sometimes another. Now that's driven by the type rather than the flag. That's it for the extract subclass pattern. Thanks for watching.